Brought to you by Matt with Sir Lester. There are three questions for this video and you are to answer them in 15 seconds each. Are you ready? In three, two, one. Let us have this new function. First question, what is the vertex of the graph of the given function? The answer is at negative 1 and 4. Second question, the concavity or the opening of the graph opens in which direction? Opens upward. Next question. What is the maximum and the minimum values of the given function? The maximum value of the function is infinity and the minimum is positive 4. Did you get 3 over 3? If not, please continue viewing this video. For this given function, we can determine the vertex, its concavity, and the minimum and maximum values of the function. In order for us to do that, we are going to start with the correct coefficients. But why is it that these three concepts are linked into one discussion? This is because they are just interrelated in a sense that the maximum and minimum values could be uh, generalized by the, give, by the computed values of the vertex and the understanding of the concavity. But again, let's start with the correct coefficients. The coefficient here, or coefficients rather, follow the same uh, structure with the coefficients of quadratic equation. A is the coefficient of your x squared. Since it's just x squared, automatically it's 1. b is the coefficient of your x, and that is 2. And c is the coefficient or the constant, which is 5. Now, these three coefficients will be used first to solve for the value or the identification of the vertex. The vertex is a point in the graph of this function where the graph changes its direction. The graph of any quadratic function is called as the parabolic graph or a parabola. And in the parabola, it could be either increasing and then at some point it changes its direction and it decreases or the other way around. So that point where it changes its direction is all called as the point of inflection and that's our vertex. So a vertex is a point in the Cartesian plane, hence it's a combination of x and y coordinates. The x coordinate of the vertex is negative b over 2a. And the y coordinate of the vertex is computed as 4ac minus b squared over 4 so once we plug in here the values of our coefficients a, b, and c, we can now determine the vertex. But don't worry about this. You don't need to memorize this here because just like any other point in the Cartesian plane, once you know the value of your x coordinate, in this case negative b over 2a, you plug in that value in our function, you will automatically get its pair, its partner y coordinate. So let's start with the x-coordinate here. The x-coordinate is again computed as negative b over 2a. So it should be negative of b, in this case, negative of 2 over 2 times a, which is 1. So x here is actually equal to negative 2 over 2 
So uh, the x coordinate of our vertex is at negative 1. This value of x will then be used to solve for the y coordinate and we will use the original function. The function given f of x is equal to x squared plus 2x plus 5. By the way, again, if your function is not yet in its standard form, do not give a, b, and c because you need to transform it first in the standard form before you can determine the correct a, b, and c coefficients. Going back here, if we are going to substitute negative 1 for x, so if we have f of negative 1, meaning the x here will become negative 1, don't forget to place parentheses, especially for negative integers, so as to include the negative sign on the process, as well as here, and then plus 5. So this is positive 1, because that's the square of negative 1. You have here minus 2, and you have here plus 5. Your f of negative 1, which is again, the correct y coordinate of our vertex is equal to 4. In short, the vertex or the point of inflection or the graph changes its direction at negative 1 and 4. When we say graph, we mean the graph on our Cartesian plane where this is vertical line is our y-axis and this horizontal line is our x-axis. In terms of graph, because we're done with the vertex, let's go to the concavity. We can have two different concavities. Our graph is either opening upward like this, and by the way, the vertex is here, if this is the graph, because it changes its direction. Once uh, from left to right, it goes down, it stops there, and once it reaches or passes the vertex, it changes the direction as it goes up. Or, our graph could also be opening downward with the vertex here. We are not to draw here the exact graph, just the representative in part of our analysis later. But if you're asked to draw the graph, you need exactly 5 points. Okay? At least, rather, at least 5 points where the vertex is the middlemost, and you will pick the other values here, here, and here, and there, so that you could see the parabolic movement. Now, again, it could either be opening upward or opening downward. How do we know? Simply look at your A coefficient here. Your A coefficient automatically tells us the direction of the concavity or the opening of our graph. It follows this idea if our a is greater than zero or in short it's positive number the, co the concavity or the graph opens upward with the vertex here but if a is less than zero the graph or the concavity opens downward with the, with the vertex here by the way we can ha have this situation where a is equal to zero we cannot give the direction of the parabola because in the first place if a is equal to zero we don't have a quadratic function it's just a linear function since x squared will become zero is as a whole this would mean uh, we don't have um, the vertex we don't have concavity either opening upward or downward it's just a line so we don't have a equal to zero so only these two considerations and since our a is positive one it fits this criteria here. This would mean our graph opens upward. It automatically ensures us of this result. So again, we will not be given the rest of the points. Let's just use the vertex. So negative 1 and then 1, 2, 3, 4. The vertex is here. Okay? And since it's opening upward, again, this is just a representation, your graph will look like this. So it opens upward. Or let's just even extend it further. So it opens upward. This may not be the exact graph, but just for representation, it opens upward like this. So from left to right, it goes down here. Once it passes the vertex at negative 1 and 4, it changes the direction and it goes up. Okay? That's the representative graph of the function here. Now with these two, 
we can now proceed with the analysis of the maximum and the minimum value. The maximum and minimum value are anchored on this axis. We have the y axis, or also known as the f of x. In short, we just simply need to look at the maximum and the minimum value of your x. Uh, I mean y, y axis or the y coordinates. So look at this one here. Uh, from left to right, our graph goes down, but once it reaches this vertex, it goes up. This would mean all the portions here were not touched by the graph, and these values of y here are not part of the graph. In short, our vertex here, which is in this area, is our minimum value. Again, just like this. From left to right, it goes down, so it goes down here. But once it reached this point, that's the vertex, it bounced back and it goes up. So this point here, which corresponds to your vertex, is the minimum value. And since, again, y-axis is the concern, here is our vertex. Automatically, the y-value of your vertex is the minimum. And by the way, generally, the y value or the y coordinate of your vertex is either the maximum or the minimum. In this case, it's the minimum, so it's 4. This is because it opens upward. If this opens downward, the point there, the vertex, is the highest point, and that should be the maximum. And which of the two? 4. Maximum value would be 4. But again, again, the given is upward, so it's only the minimum value. How about the maximum value? The maximum value of our y is patterned to this one here. Again, it goes down, it goes up, but these portions here are extending towards infinity. It's still extending as soon as you add more values of x, more values of y. It's still extending, I mean it's still x here rather. It, the y value is still extending upward. So the maximum here is not exact, but it's very clear that it is positive infinity. See, these two were identified by the y coordinate of your vertex and the concavity. This is why these three concerns are locked into this video as this connects the other. You don't need to compute here, just simply analyze as well as this consideration for the other concepts. So these are the answers for the three questions for this video, including these processes, and this clarifies the function for this. Graphing. Subscribe now!